In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to make a roll top pencil case. I love mine and these pencil cases make for really nice gifts. So today I'll show you an awesome design tool I used for making this pencil case and I'll also show you how to assemble it so you'll have no trouble making your own. To design the pencil case, I used a tool called boxes.py. It's a really cool website and I recommend checking it out. The tool is mostly for making boxes, but you can find other nice things as well. To use the site, you start with the basic design you like most, and you are then able to change its dimensions and many other settings to make it just the way you want. I was designing a pencil box with a rolling top when I ran into this website, and the version I made using this tool was so much better, I just had to show it to you instead. I started with a box design that they call the shutter box which resembled what I was going for. I measured some pencils and pens to get a grip of the dimensions I wanted for the box and set the dimensions accordingly. I also wanted the box to have two round edges rather than just one, which is conveniently done in just a single click here. One of the things I like most about this software is that you can readily modify the material thickness and compensate for the curve, which to me is the most annoying part of any design for laser cutting. When you are done setting up your design, just press generate and the design is saved to almost any format you like. It's important to know that this is just a tool. You have to fit it with the right inputs and make sure it's doing what you ask for. It's time for some laser cutting. I used Lightburn to fit the entire design within the working area of my laser and laid a piece of 3.5mm plywood. I have a 10 watt XLD1 dial laser, so cutting the parts took a while, probably 45 minutes or so. Boxes.py does not supply you with instructions, so assembly is kind of like a puzzle. You have to figure out what goes where on your own. Lay the pieces on your table and make sure you have all the parts. Let's get to work. Fetch one of the side faces and insert the inner face and short segments into place. If you set up the right curve value, you are probably going to need a hammer for this part. Next, attach the side face. Things are finally starting to gain shape. Attach the front and back faces. Before attaching the bottom of the pencil case, we need to glue the rounded inner corners in place. Once all four rounded corners are in place, insert the bottom of the pencil case. I used a thin screwdriver to push the rounded corners into place. To prepare the shutter, make sure the cuts are clean and that it flexes easily. You should also attach its handle. We are almost done. Apply some glue to one of the smaller arcs and put it in place like so. Glue the other small arc as well, and let the glue dry. Before inserting the shutter, sand its edges and apply some oil or wax to the sliding surfaces. Slide in the rolling shutter. Finally, we need to glue the larger arcs in place to make a rail for the rolling shutter. Hold the shutter down while you glue the arcs because it tends to push on them. I left a heavy rock to keep the shutter from displacing the large arcs while the glue dries and cleaned up the excess glue before it dried. We are all done with this beautiful one of a kind pencil case. You wouldn't believe how people react to it. The flexible wooden shutter, the sound it makes when you open and close it, people can't stop playing with it. I gave one of these boxes as a gift and the feedback was incredible. I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to my new channel. As always, everything you need to make your own can be found in the description. Thanks for watching.